In 1804, an expeditionary force under the command of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark embarked on their journey from the vicinity of St. Louis all the way towards the west coast of the United States. It was the first expeditionary team to cross through the continental divide of the Americas into the Louisiana Territory after the Louisiana Purchase and trekked all the way to the west coast, encountering Native American tribes and harsh winters. The expedition was filled with unforeseen circumstances, coincidences and adventure, and arguably was one of the best bargains the United States had ever gotten. In 1803, the United States under President Thomas Jefferson bought 2.1 million square kilometers, around 828 square miles of land that belonged to France. The United States paid one and a half cents per acre, $15 million in total, for the land that had been enchartered up until this point. This basically meant that nobody knew exactly what President Jefferson had bought and many were opposed to the transaction. The purchase was seen through regardless, and one of the important things that Jefferson hoped to acquire with the purchase was the so-called Northwest Passage, a waterway route that would join the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Already back then, much travel and commerce was supported by sailing over riverways, and if the mythical passage could be found, it would mean ships did not have to sail around the southern tip of the continent or via the western trading post of French Canada in order to reach the Spanish settlements on the west coast. You see, there were no railroads yet, and while settlers with classic wagons and stagecoaches would occasionally travel west, overland travel was dangerous because of not only the harsh weather conditions, but because of hostile Native American tribes as well. With the knowledge we have now, we know there is no Northwest Passage in United States territory, and that knowledge is thanks to the settlers and adventurers that decided to embark on a risky journey well into the uncharted territory after it was purchased. Due to the Louisiana Purchase, not just President Jefferson, but many Americans with him, realized that the area west of the frontier ought to be explored if the US wanted to gain control over the territory up to the west coast. A military expedition with the purpose of mapping and exploring the territory was approved of by Congress. It would start at St. Louis and travel along the Missouri and Columbia River in order to hopefully discover this much sought after Northwest Passage, linking the inland with the Pacific Ocean. Furthermore, the documenting of the new ecosystem, species of animals and plants and Native American tribes and their languages was among the tasks of this military expedition. President Jefferson selected his personal secretary, Captain Meriwether Lewis, for the task. He was 28 years old at the time and was renowned for his leadership capabilities, though for a military expedition of this magnitude, he was reluctant to accept. Lewis asked a friend of his, William Clark, to join him and share the command of the Corps of Discovery. Clark was a geographical expert and took it upon him to log every day, map out the territory and keep records of whatever the group would encounter. It took months to prepare the expedition and shortly after the Louisiana Purchase, the group was ready to commence into the uncharted territory. They projected the entire expedition would cost $2,500, which the government supplied. Among food supplies, the group brought supplies to trade with the Native American tribes they would encounter as well. For example, they brought 140 mirrors, needles and cloth. On the 14th of May 1804, the group started their trek westward from Hartford, Illinois, with some members joining at St. Charles in Missouri. They were with about 40 men sailing with their flatboat and two canoes following the zigzag stream of the Missouri. It didn't take long for the group to sail past La Charette, the lost settlement of Americans by the Missouri River, slowly sailing more northward. They were now surrounded by plains filled with buffalo, elk and plant specimens that were unknown to the western world. After a few days, the group encountered their first Native American tribe, which was accustomed to settlers, as they had been trading with them already for a couple of years. As they sailed further north, they happened 
to encounter the Teton Sioux, who didn't take so kindly to the team of explorers, demanding presents and whiskey. After Clark refused, it seemed like a conflict would erupt as the Teton Sioux drew their bows and the situation was only diffused when the other men drew their guns, after which the Native Americans withdrew. It wouldn't be the last armed confrontation the men would have with Native American tribes. In August of that year, they lost their first and only member of the group, Charles Floyd, probably due to appendicitis. Now, nearing the winter, the men crossed the border of what is present-day North Dakota, where they built Fort Mandan near Washburn to spend the winter months. During this break, much information was gathered about local Native American tribes, such as the Mandan and their language, culture and customs. As the group spent the winter here, they met a French trapper named Toussaint Charbonneau and his wife, Sacagawea, a Shoshone Indian. While Charbonneau was not described as much of value, his wife was excellent in order to help the men navigate throughout the territory and share knowledge about the Native American tribes, acting as a translator, among other things. She was about 16 and was pregnant when they met her. The group established peace with the Mandan nation and Clark spent the winter months writing his report, a statistical view of the Indian nations inhabiting the territory of Louisiana, where he detailed not just tribes, but their location, water routes, and customs. In the spring of 1905, the expedition resumed, as it was a harsh winter and the ice on the river had only started to melt in March. At first, they were hesitant to resume their journey. The large keel boat was of no use and they sent it back to St. Louis with splint specimens they had gathered. Furthermore, in February, Sacagawea gave birth to his son, Jean-Baptiste, who now became the youngest member of the expedition. She crafted a cradle board and carried the baby for the rest of the expedition. The group once again went westward with a canoe via the Missouri, where the group attempted to locate the origins of the river. Two months later, the expedition reached the Great Falls of Missouri, present-day Great Falls of Montana, confirming they were traveling in the right direction. Sacagawea told them of a Shoshone camp near the Salmon River, after which Lewis decided to locate the camp. Once found, Lewis requested several warriors and the chief came away for horses, but some Shoshone refused as they thought it was an ambush. Eventually, Lewis managed to convince them to accompany him back to the camp, and once they arrived, Sacagawea changed her demeanor as she shall come away. She started talking Shoshone to him. It turned out the chief was her brother, and she hadn't seen him since she was abducted by a rival tribe, the Hidatsa years before. It was one of the strange coincidences in history that make an adventure tale that much better. After an emotional reunion, Kamawe traded horses to the group and they hired a Shoshone guide, Old Toby, and crossed the Rocky Mountains. Once they crossed over the mountains and reached the valley, they traded their horses to Nez Perce Indians and crafted dugout canoes from trees they had cut. They sailed onto the Columbia River and when they caught the first glimpse of the Pacific Ocean on the 7th of November, it was the confirmation they had traversed the continent, though it also confirmed a Northwest Passage did not exist. The men built a 50 by 50 wooden fort they named Fort Clatsop on the south side of the Columbia and spent the winter there. During the winter, both Lewis and Clark dedicated themselves to writing and mapping, trying to note all they had discovered. After winter, on the 23rd of March, they embarked on their trip back to the civilized world. They retraced their steps until they reached Montana. The party split with Clark traveling by the Yellowstone River and Lewis went overland towards the north to the Great Falls of the Missouri. On July 26th at Cutbank Creek in present-day Montana, Lewis' group encountered a group of eight Blackfeet Indians. The Blackfeet were known for being very hostile and always being on a warpath. While there were eight Indians, there were multiple horses, it being very likely more Blackfeet were nearby. The party advanced towards the Blackfeet and made peace signs. The Blackfeet returned the peace signs through sign languages they managed to communicate and they came together that night. It would be a mistake. Through sign language they learned the Blackfeet had been trading at a British trading post in present-day Canada and that they were part of a large hunting party. As the party slept, the Blackfeet tried to steal their weapons. When the men woke up because they heard the Blackfeet fiddling with their guns 
and ammunition, they noticed many of their guns were gone. In the ensuing scuffle, Lewis's men managed to shoot and kill two Blackfeet. The rest of the Blackfeet fled, but afraid other warriors close by heard shots and would come after them. The party fled over 100 miles over the Missouri before they set up camp again. This clash would mark the relations with the Blackfeet in the future, as during the subsequent years, Americans that encountered Blackfoot men were generally met with hostility. After both parties traveled separately, they eventually united at the junction of the Yellowstone and Missouri rivers, and together they reached the Mandan villages, where Sacagawea and Charbonneau parted ways with them. On the 23rd of September, they reached St. Louis. It took them two years four months and ten days. While there was no Northwest Passage, they had mapped the Northwest Territory, creating the basis for adventurers and settlers to track westward and the creation of Washington and Oregon as new states. While the expedition cost more than the projected $2,500, it was one of the best investments the United States had ever made. Funnily enough, while Lewis and Clark shot to fame, a third member of the expedition became famous. More statues of Sacagawea, the Shoshone woman, can be found in the United States than of any other woman in U.S. history. John Colton, one of Lewis and Clark's men, became the first known mountain man and had a run-in with the Blackfeet Indians years later, where he barely escaped with his life. But that's a story for another time. Thank you for watching this video. And what's an event or person from the Wild West that you would like to know more about and perhaps see a video of? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing to my channel. See you next time.